Welcome, I'm Robert Whipple. This is NCR 507. It is February 2nd, 2013, and I'm recording this lecture on how to create a demographic profile using U.S. Census data. The purpose of creating a demographic profile is to look at different variables that may impact a conflict. Uh, often when you're doing research you're looking at things such as the race and ethnicity, the language, or the social economic status of the population you're studying. For this example I will do a simple comparison among Hooper Bay, Alaska, the Carson-Compton area and the United States as a whole. The, the simplest way to find demographic data is to go to the United States Census Bureau. The, they usually update some of the databases annually and most of them they update every 10 years with the United States Census. From the United States Census Bureau homepage, you could go to the Data tab and the American Fact Finder. And this has some good tools to look at regional data. In Community Facts, what I am doing during this example is comparing Hooper Bay, Alaska, and I'm going to enter it by the zip code 99604. Enter. And from here it has several different broad categories. Uh, and here the first one is age. The total population of 99604 is 1093. Then down here it has different data such as the 2010 census database which has population, age, sex, race, household, and housing. If I click on this it takes me to a much more detailed data set for this area where it breaks it down to some pretty fine statistics um, and going back it also has American Community Surveys and other uh, census reports. Now if I want to change and go to the Carson area where Cal State Dominguez is located and where I lived at the last census 10 years ago I type 90746 and this is right across the street from Cal State Dominguez and there the population is 25,990 and then it has uh, different data sets such as the income, employment, and occupation data. And once the database lo loads, it has a whole bunch of different options here that you can look at the data. You can modify the tables and download the data. So there's a lot of different options that you have within American Fact Finder. And if I want to look at a broader area like a state or in this case the whole country, I type USA and it gives me the population for the United States and a lot of different um, data sets here. Going back to the census page, uh, the main page, there is um, many different data sets you have available uh, to you and uh, I hope you can explore these different um, sources of information.
What I did was take the information from the census site and created a table. I compared the median age of Hooper Bay with the median age of people in Carson and the US as a whole. The median age in Hooper Bay was 22.1 in contrast to 40.7 for Carson, California. So most people are about half the age in Hooper Bay. I also looked at the percentage of households with children under 18. In Hooper Bay, there is 57.7% of the households have children under 18, whereas only 27.3% of the households near Cal State Dominguez Hills have children under 18. Uh, I also compared average household sizes and race. I also contrasted educational attainment levels and some of the differences among uh, education levels is that up at the level that you're studying in Hooper Bay, Alaska, less than 1% of the population has a graduate or professional degree, whereas 10% of the area around California State Dominguez Hills and the USA as a whole have obtained graduate or professional degrees. Next, looking at some community facts such as per capita income. In Hooper Bay, the per capita income is less than one third what it is in uh, the USA as a whole or around Cal State Dominguez Hills. The Hooper Bay per capita income is $8,849 per year, whereas around California State University Dominguez Hills, it's above 28000 and close to 28000 as the USA as a whole. Also, the median household income is significantly lower in Hooper Bay and the poverty rate at, in Hooper Bay, Alaska is 41.3 percent compared to 7.5 percent around CSUDH and 14.3 percent in the USA as a whole. Another very variable that might be a source of conflict is the percentage of people who are unemployed. In Hooper Bay, it's 34.3 percent, whereas it's around 12.3 percent for CSUDH area and 8.7 percent in the U.S. as a whole. Uh, there's other information about the distance of commute and Hooper Bay seems to have an advantage where the average commute time is 5.2 minutes where it's 29.9 minutes in the Los Angeles area and 25.4 minutes in the US. And another interesting statistic was the commuting to work. In Hooper Bay, 44.3% uh, walk to work and 54.6% uh, or other, which from my familiarity with the area, it's snowmobile and ATVs, whereas in the Los Angeles area, 80.7% uh, commute alone in their car. In conclusion, when you're conducting research, you often have to write a brief outline of the background or demographic variables you are researching. For this assignment, I want you to make it as simple as possible, and you're going to post 
to a blog which includes a search for demographic data related to your research question using the US Census website or a similar website if uh, the census database doesn't apply. Uh, share four to six variables you, that have an impact on the conflict you are researching. Describe the significance of the demographic variables in escalating or managing the conflict in your research. And then write a short paragraph about the demographic variables to include in your final portfolio conflict story or IRB. And once you post this blog, you should also look at the other demographic profiles posted by your peers and provide comments. I look forward to reading your findings in this week's project.